Sometimes even to live is an act of courage. To rise each morning and face the world with its complexities requires a courage that is all too real, yet rarely acknowledged. The Stoics believed that we must not overlook this fundamental courage that underlies our daily existence. Because the courage to continue to endure, to persist in the face of life's relentless trials, is perhaps the most commendable of all. Let us therefore embrace each day as an opportunity to exercise our inner strength, to demonstrate a courage that is not born of circumstance but of choice. Let us explore three stoic secrets to cultivate the ultimate shield of resilience in daily life. Lesson 1. Embracing the Dichotomy of Control This principle, cherished by the Stoics, holds the key to unlocking a life of peace, strength, and unwavering resilience. Are you ready to discover how shifting your focus can transform your entire experience of the world? The Stoics, a group of ancient philosophers including Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius, taught that the foundation of resilience lies in distinguishing between what we can control and what we cannot. Epictetus famously said, some things are in our control and others not. This simple yet profound statement is the cornerstone of the dichotomy of control. By recognizing this fundamental truth, we can redirect our energy from the futile effort of trying to control the uncontrollable to mastering our own minds and actions. Imagine the relief of letting go of the weight of the world and focusing solely on what you can influence. Doesn't that sound liberating? Consider the modern phenomenon of social media. How often do we find ourselves affected by the opinions, comments, or actions of others online? The Stoics would remind us that we cannot control what others think or say, but we can control how we respond. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. By internalizing this wisdom, we shift from reacting impulsively to thoughtfully choosing our responses. Instead of getting into a heated online debate, we might choose to disengage or respond calmly, preserving our peace of mind. Isn't it empowering to know that we hold the reins to our own emotional well-being? The Stoics believed that misplacing our focus onto external factors leads to unnecessary suffering. When we fixate on things beyond our control, we set ourselves up for frustration and disappointment. Think about the weather, an entirely uncontrollable aspect of life. Planning an outdoor event and obsessing over the possibility of rain doesn't change the outcome. It only adds stress. Epictetus advised, don't seek to have events happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do happen, and your life will go smoothly. By accepting the weather as it is, and preparing accordingly, we maintain our equilibrium. Could adopting this mindset reduce the stress you experience in daily life? In the workplace, the dichotomy of control becomes a powerful tool for professional resilience. Suppose you're up for a promotion, and despite your hard work, the decision is influenced by factors beyond your control, like company restructuring or favoritism. The Stoics would counsel you to focus on your own efforts and virtues. Seneca noted, A good character is the only guarantee of everlasting, carefree happiness. By dedicating yourself to excellence in your work and personal growth, you maintain integrity regardless of external outcomes. This not only builds resilience, but also positions you for future opportunities. After all, isn't your character more enduring than any single career setback? Relationships provide another arena where embracing the dichotomy of control can enhance resilience. We often try to change others, nudging a partner to adopt healthier habits or hoping a friend will be more considerate. The Stoics remind us that we cannot control others' actions, only our own. Epictetus taught, let whatever happens be what you want, which is to accept what you cannot change. By accepting others as they are and focusing on how we choose to interact with them, we reduce friction and cultivate more harmonious relationships. Isn't it a relief to release the burden of trying to control others and instead invest in your own responses? Now, let's delve into a practical way to apply this stoic secret and cultivate resilience in your daily life. Start by creating a two-column journal. Label one column, within my control, and the other, beyond my control. Whenever you face a stressful situation, 
write down the aspects that fall under each category. For example, if you're anxious about an upcoming presentation, you might list within my control, preparation, practice, attitude, and beyond my control, audience's reactions, technical issues. By visually separating these factors, you can prioritize your energy on effective preparation and let go of worries about the audience's response. Over time, this practice trains your mind to instinctively focus on controllable elements, enhancing your resilience. Would you be willing to give this a try and see how it transforms your stress levels? The Stoics also emphasize the importance of internal virtues over external possessions or statuses. In a world obsessed with material success, this perspective is revolutionary. Epictetus stated, Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. By focusing on developing virtues like wisdom, courage, justice, and self-discipline, all within our control, we build a solid foundation that external circumstances cannot easily shake. This internal wealth contributes significantly to our resilience. After all, if your sense of worth isn't tied to external validations, how much more stable and content might you be? Consider athletes who train tirelessly, only to face unforeseen setbacks like injuries. Those who embrace the dichotomy of control acknowledge the injury, beyond their control, and focus on rehabilitation and mental fortitude, within their control. This mindset not only aids in recovery, but often leads to personal growth beyond physical abilities. They might develop greater patience, mental toughness, or discover new passions like coaching. By channeling energy into controllable aspects, they emerge stronger and more resilient. Isn't this a powerful testament to the transformative potential of focusing on what we can control? In our fast-paced world, news of global events can feel overwhelming. While it's important to stay informed, the Stoics would caution against letting distant events over which we have no influence disrupt our inner peace. Instead, they would encourage us to contribute positively where we can, perhaps through community service or supporting causes we care about. By doing so, we exercise control over our actions and make a tangible difference. Marcus Aurelius advised, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. Isn't it more productive to act within our sphere of influence than to worry about things beyond it? Embracing the dichotomy of control is not about inaction or passivity. It's about empowered focus. It's recognizing that while we can't direct the wind, we can adjust our sails. By concentrating on our thoughts, choices, and reactions, we navigate life's turbulent waters with greater ease and resilience. The Stoics lived through wars, exiles, and personal tragedies, yet their philosophy enabled them to maintain inner tranquility. If they could find peace amidst such trials, can't we apply the same principles to our modern challenges? But how exactly do we implement the dichotomy of control in the hustle and bustle of everyday life? Let's delve deeper into practical strategies that can help you internalize this stoic secret and make resilience your default response to adversity. Are you curious about how small shifts in focus can lead to profound changes in your life? One effective method is adopting a morning ritual centered around intention setting. Begin your day by reflecting on the tasks ahead and identifying potential stressors. Ask yourself which aspects are within your control. For instance, you might have an important meeting scheduled. You can't control the outcome or others' opinions, but you can control your preparation, punctuality, and attitude. By focusing on these elements, you set a proactive tone for the day. Marcus Aurelius practiced this by preparing his mind each morning reminding himself of the virtues he wished to embody. Could starting your day with such clarity enhance your resilience throughout the day? Another powerful practice is mindfulness meditation focused on acceptance. Spend a few minutes each day in quiet reflection, observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Acknowledge any worries about uncontrollable events and gently redirect your focus to the present moment. This aligns with the stoic practice of focusing on the here and now where your actions can make a difference. Over time, this meditation strengthens your ability to remain centered amidst chaos. Isn't cultivating such inner peace a worthwhile endeavor? 
The Stoics also valued the importance of language in shaping our perceptions and responses. Pay attention to the words you use when thinking or speaking about challenges. Instead of saying, I have to finish this project, shift to, I choose to work on this project. This subtle change reinforces your agency and control over your actions. Epictetus taught that men are disturbed not by things, but by the views they take of them. By reframing your language, you alter your perspective, reducing stress and increasing motivation. How might this linguistic shift impact your daily experiences? In social situations, practicing compassionate detachment can be transformative. Recognize that others' actions are a reflection of their own experiences and choices, not a direct affront to you. When faced with criticism or negativity, pause and consider the source. Is the feedback constructive? If so, use it to grow. If not, let it pass without internalizing it. This approach protects your emotional well-being and fosters healthier relationships. Isn't it empowering to know that you can maintain your peace regardless of others' moods or opinions? Consider also the role of expectations in your life. High and rigid expectations about how things should unfold can lead to disappointment when reality doesn't align. The Stoics encourage us to hold our expectations lightly. By being open to various outcomes, we reduce the sting of unmet expectations and remain adaptable. Seneca advised, expecting is the greatest impediment to living. In anticipation of tomorrow, it loses today. By focusing on the present and accepting whatever comes, we enhance our resilience. Could releasing rigid expectations bring more joy and flexibility into your life? Engaging in physical activities that emphasize control over your actions can also reinforce this stoic secret. Practices like yoga, martial arts, or even mindful walking require you to focus on your movements and breath. These activities cultivate a mind-body connection that enhances awareness of what you can control, your body, and reactions. This physical embodiment of the dichotomy of control strengthens your mental application of the principle. Have you experienced how physical discipline can translate into mental resilience? Journaling is another practical tool to deepen your understanding and application of the dichotomy of control. At the end of each day, reflect on situations where you successfully focused on what you could control and note the outcomes. Also, Acknowledge moments where you got caught up in uncontrollable aspects and consider how you might handle them differently next time. This reflective practice reinforces learning and personal growth. Over time, you'll likely see a pattern of increasing resilience and peace. Isn't self-awareness the first step toward meaningful change? It's also beneficial to surround yourself with reminders of Stoic wisdom. You might place quotes from Stoic philosophers in your workspace or set daily affirmations on your phone. For example, a notification that says, focus on what you can control, can serve as a gentle nudge during a hectic day. Immersing yourself in these teachings keeps the principles at the forefront of your mind, making it easier to apply them consistently. Could these small reminders help you stay aligned with your goals? Engaging in community discussions or groups focused on stoicism can provide support and deeper insights. Sharing experiences with others on the same path can enhance your understanding and resolve. Teaching the principles to someone else is also a powerful way to internalize them. As you explain the dichotomy of control to a friend or family member, you reinforce your own commitment to the practice. Isn't shared wisdom one of the most effective ways to grow? By continuing to explore and implement the dichotomy of control, you deepen your capacity for resilience. This stoic secret isn't a one-time revelation, but a lifelong practice that evolves with you. Each time you consciously choose to focus on what you can control, you strengthen your inner fortress against the unpredictability of life. The Stoics didn't promise a life without challenges, but they offered tools to face those challenges with grace and strength. So, as you move forward, how will you embrace this principle more fully? Are you ready to make the dichotomy of control a guiding beacon in your journey toward resilience? Lesson 2. Practicing Premeditatio Malorum Harnessing Negative Visualization for Resilience Have you ever wondered how preparing for the worst could actually bring out the best in you? 
What if envisioning potential challenges could fortify your mind against adversity? Today, we'll delve into the second Stoic secret to cultivating resilience, practicing premeditatio malorum, or the art of negative visualization. The Stoics believed that by mentally rehearsing possible misfortunes, we could reduce fear, enhance appreciation for what we have, and strengthen our ability to cope with life's uncertainties. Are you ready to discover how anticipating challenges can empower you to face them with confidence? The Stoics, including philosophers like Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, often engaged in negative visualization as a daily practice. Seneca advised, rehearse them in your mind, exile, torture, war, shipwreck. All the terms of human suffering should be before our eyes. This wasn't to invite misfortune, but to prepare the mind for any eventuality. By contemplating possible setbacks, the Stoics aimed to minimize the shock of unexpected events and reduce the impact of fear. Imagine being so mentally prepared that no surprise could destabilize you. Wouldn't that level of readiness make you more resilient in the face of adversity? Consider modern scenarios where negative visualization can be beneficial. Think about preparing for a job interview. Instead of only picturing a flawless interaction, you might also envision tough questions or technical glitches. By anticipating these challenges, you're less likely to be thrown off if they occur. Epictetus taught, the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. By mentally navigating potential obstacles, you equip yourself with strategies to overcome them. Isn't it reassuring to know that you've already faced these hurdles in your mind? The Stoics understood that life is unpredictable and that clinging to expectations of constant comfort sets us up for disappointment. By regularly reflecting on possible difficulties, we build psychological resilience. This doesn't mean dwelling pessimistically on worst-case scenarios, but acknowledging that they are within the realm of possibility. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Nothing happens to anybody which he is not fitted by nature to bear. By accepting that hardships are a natural part of life, we reduce the fear associated with them. Could embracing this mindset alleviate some of your anxiety about the future? In personal relationships, practicing negative visualization can enhance appreciation and strengthen bonds. By contemplating life without a loved one, through distance, disagreement, or even loss, we come to value their presence more deeply. Epictetus suggested, he who shrinks from the future will soon grow old. By facing the possibility of separation, we cherish our time together more fully. This doesn't mean becoming morbid or paranoid, but fostering gratitude for what we have now. How might this practice deepen your connections with those you care about? To incorporate premeditatio malorum into your daily life, start by setting aside a few minutes each morning to visualize your day ahead, including potential challenges. For example, imagine your commute being delayed, a project hitting a snag, or a meeting being more contentious than expected. By picturing these scenarios, you mentally prepare yourself to handle them calmly and effectively if they arise. Over time, this practice reduces the element of surprise and enhances your problem-solving abilities. Wouldn't approaching your day with this level of preparedness boost your confidence and resilience? The Stoics also used negative visualization to temper desires and reduce attachment to material possessions. By imagining life without certain comforts or luxuries, they diminished the fear of losing them. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. In a consumer-driven society, this perspective can liberate us from the constant pursuit of more. By recognizing that we can endure without excess, we become more resilient to loss and less driven by external validation. Could this realization lead to a more content and grounded life? In the context of health, negative visualization can encourage proactive measures. By contemplating potential illnesses or injuries, we might be more motivated to maintain a healthy lifestyle and appreciate our current well-being. This isn't about inducing fear, but fostering mindfulness about our physical condition. Marcus Aurelius reflected, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. By acknowledging our mortality, we prioritize what truly matters. Isn't it wise to let the fragility of life inspire us to live more fully? 
Let's explore a practical exercise to harness negative visualization for resilience. Choose an aspect of your life that you value greatly, your job, a relationship, or a personal ability. Spend a few moments imagining what life would be like without it. How would you cope? What would you miss the most? Then, reflect on how you can strengthen that area or prepare for potential changes. This exercise not only deepens your appreciation, but also prompts you to take actions that reinforce your resilience. For instance, if you value your job, you might consider expanding your skill set to remain adaptable. Isn't it proactive to prepare for change rather than be blindsided by it? In financial planning, negative visualization can lead to more robust strategies. By considering potential economic downturns or unexpected expenses, we might prioritize saving and investing wisely. Seneca observed, It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. By preparing for lean times, we reduce stress and increase our ability to weather financial storms. This foresight contributes to a sense of security and resilience. Wouldn't you feel more at ease knowing you're prepared for whatever economic challenges come your way? Critics might argue that negative visualization fosters pessimism or anxiety. However, the Stoics intended it as a means to reduce fear and enhance joy. By confronting potential hardships in our minds, we rob them of their power to terrify us. It's important to balance this practice with gratitude and positive visualization. Recognize the good in your life while being mindful of potential challenges. This balanced approach leads to a more stable and resilient mindset. Could integrating both perspectives provide a more comprehensive preparation for life's ups and downs? In the realm of sports, athletes often use a form of negative visualization to enhance performance. They anticipate possible setbacks, a missed shot, an unexpected move by an opponent, and mentally rehearse their responses. This preparation enables them to remain composed under pressure. The Stoics would applaud this method as it aligns with their teachings. By envisioning difficulties, athletes build mental toughness and adaptability. How might adopting a similar approach improve your performance in high-stress situations? The Stoics also believe that negative visualization helps us detach from excessive emotional reactions. When we accept that loss and hardship are inevitable, we can face them with equanimity. Epictetus taught, Men are disturbed not by things, but by the views they take of them. By adjusting our expectations and preparing our minds, we lessen the emotional impact of adverse events. This doesn't mean suppressing feelings but managing them constructively. Isn't it beneficial to navigate challenges without being overwhelmed by emotion? To further implement premeditatio malorum, consider periodic reflections on broader life changes. For instance, contemplate how you would adapt if you had to move to a new city or change careers. What steps would you take? How would you maintain your well-being? This exercise enhances flexibility and reduces fear of the unknown. By mapping out potential responses, you build a toolkit for resilience. Doesn't having a plan, even a tentative one, make facing change less daunting? One of the profound effects of premeditatio malorum is an increased appreciation for what we have. By contemplating the loss of everyday conveniences, like electricity, clean water, or even our morning coffee, we become more grateful for them. This gratitude elevates our daily experiences from mundane to cherished. Enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones. By valuing the present, we derive more satisfaction and reduce the yearning for more. Could cultivating such gratitude enhance your day-to-day -day happiness? Negative visualization also helps in managing expectations, a significant factor in emotional well-being. High expectations can lead to disappointment when reality falls short. By considering less favorable outcomes, we adjust our expectations to a more realistic level. This doesn't mean settling for less, but being prepared for various possibilities. Marcus Aurelius advised, Receive without conceit, release without struggle. By maintaining balanced expectations, we experience fewer emotional highs and lows, contributing to a steadier, more resilient mindset. Isn't it preferable to navigate life without the roller coaster of extreme emotions? In interpersonal dynamics, 
anticipating misunderstandings or conflicts can prepare us to handle them more effectively. For example, before a difficult conversation, envision possible reactions from the other person, including defensive or emotional responses. By considering these scenarios, you can plan your approach to maintain constructive dialogue. Epictetus suggested, first learn the meaning of what you say, and then speak. Preparedness enhances communication and reduces the likelihood of escalation. Could this foresight improve your relationships and conflict resolution skills? Moreover, negative visualization can reduce the fear of failure that often hinders progress. By accepting that setbacks are part of any worthwhile endeavor, we become more willing to take calculated risks. Seneca observed, It is not because things are difficult that we do not dare, it is because we do not dare that they are difficult. By confronting the possibility of failure in our minds, we diminish its power over us. This courage propels us forward, fostering resilience through action. How might embracing potential failure unlock new opportunities for you? In the context of mental health, premeditatio malorum can be a tool for managing anxiety. By systematically and rationally contemplating fears, we can assess their likelihood and impact. This process often reveals that our fears are exaggerated or unfounded. Marcus Aurelius noted, If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it. By re-evaluating our perceptions, we reduce anxiety and gain control over our emotional responses. Isn't gaining such control over anxiety a valuable step toward resilience? To integrate negative visualization into your personal growth journey, consider keeping a journal dedicated to this practice. Regularly write down potential challenges related to your goals and brainstorm strategies to address them. This proactive approach not only prepares you for obstacles, but also enhances problem-solving skills. Over time, you'll build a repository of insights and solutions that bolster your confidence. Wouldn't having such a resource at your disposal make you feel more equipped to handle setbacks? The Stoics also used negative visualization to foster humility. By recognizing that fortune can change at any moment, we avoid arrogance and entitlement. Epictetus warned, when you are delighted with anything, be delighted as with something that is not one of the treasures of your soul. This humility keeps us grounded and appreciative, traits that contribute to strong character and resilience. Could embracing humility through this practice improve your interactions and self-perception? In educational pursuits, students can apply negative visualization to prepare for exams or presentations. By imagining difficult questions or technical issues, they can develop contingency plans and reduce performance anxiety. This preparation leads to better outcomes and a more resilient attitude toward academic challenges. Isn't being well prepared a key factor in academic and professional success? Furthermore, premeditatio malorum can enhance creativity and innovation. By contemplating what could go wrong, we often uncover overlooked weaknesses or areas for improvement. This foresight allows us to refine ideas and projects before issues arise. Marcus Aurelius encouraged, Look well into thyself. There is a source of strength which will always spring up if thou wilt always look. By turning inward and anticipating challenges, we tap into deeper levels of insight. Could this proactive problem-solving elevate your creative endeavors? In the face of global issues like climate change or economic instability, Negative visualization can inspire proactive measures. By acknowledging potential future scenarios, we might be motivated to adopt sustainable practices or diversify investments. This awareness transforms concern into actionable steps, enhancing both personal resilience and contributing to broader solutions. Isn't it empowering to turn worry into meaningful action? Lastly, it's important to balance negative visualization with positive thinking to avoid becoming overly pessimistic. The Stoics aimed for a harmonious mindset, accepting the potential for both good and bad. By coupling premeditatio malorum with gratitude and optimism, we create a balanced perspective that fosters resilience. A happy life is one which is in accordance with its own nature. By embracing all facets of life, we align ourselves with this principle. Could achieving this balance lead to a more fulfilling and resilient life? 
In embracing the practice of premeditatio malorum, we unlock a powerful tool for cultivating resilience. By mentally preparing for potential challenges, we reduce fear, enhance appreciation, and strengthen our ability to navigate adversity. The Stoics offer timeless wisdom that, when applied, can transform our lives. So as you move forward, will you adopt this practice and harness the strength it brings? Isn't it time to face the future with both eyes open and a spirit ready for whatever comes? Lesson 3. Building Your Inner Citadel Cultivating Resilience Through Inner Strength have you ever felt overwhelmed by the chaos of the outside world, as if external events are battering you from every direction? Do you wish you had an unshakable core, a fortress within, where you could retreat and find peace amidst the storm? The Stoics believed that by developing an inner citadel, we can create a sanctuary of strength and tranquility that no external circumstance can penetrate. Today, we will explore the third Stoic secret to cultivating resilience building your inner citadel. This concept teaches us how to fortify our minds, cultivate inner virtues, and become impervious to life's inevitable challenges. Are you ready to embark on a journey inward, to construct a fortress of resilience that stands strong, regardless of what the world throws at you? The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius often referred to the inner citadel in his writings. He believed that within each of us lies a stronghold of reason and virtue that, when properly developed, serves as our ultimate defense against external turmoil. Seneca wrote, Men seek retreats for themselves, houses in the country, seashores and mountains, and you too are wont to desire such things very much. But this is altogether a mark of the most common sort of men, for it is in your power whenever you shall choose to retire into yourself. This suggests that true peace and resilience are found not in external escapes, but within our own minds. Isn't it empowering to think that you carry your sanctuary within you, accessible at any moment? Building your inner citadel involves cultivating virtues such as wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance, the core principles of Stoicism. By developing these virtues, we strengthen our character and become less susceptible to external disturbances. For example, wisdom allows us to discern what is truly important. Courage enables us to face challenges head on. Justice guides us to act fairly toward others. And temperance helps us maintain self-control. Epictetus taught, No man is free who is not master of himself. By mastering ourselves through virtue, we fortify our inner citadel. How might focusing on these virtues enhance your ability to withstand adversity? In our modern lives, we're bombarded with distractions and stresses, social media, news cycles, work pressures, and personal obligations. These external factors can erode our sense of peace if we let them. The Stoics would advise us to turn inward and anchor ourselves in our inner citadel. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You must lay aside the burdens of the mind. Until you do this, no place will satisfy you. By focusing on our internal state rather than external circumstances, we regain control over our reactions and emotions. Imagine navigating a hectic day with a calm center, unperturbed by chaos. Wouldn't that make you more resilient and effective in your daily life? One practical way to build your inner citadel is through mindfulness and meditation. By setting aside time each day to quiet the mind and reflect, we strengthen our ability to remain centered. Marcus Aurelius himself practiced daily reflection, often writing in his journal to examine his thoughts and actions. This practice helps us become more aware of our internal dialogue and habitual reactions. By observing our thoughts without judgment, we can identify negative patterns and replace them with virtuous ones. Over time, this self-awareness becomes a powerful tool for resilience. Could dedicating just a few minutes each day to mindfulness transform your inner strength? Another aspect of constructing your inner citadel is developing emotional resilience. The Stoics taught that while we cannot control external events, we can control our responses to them. This means acknowledging our emotions without letting them dominate us. Epictetus advised, It's not what happens to you but how you react to it that matters. By practicing emotional regulation, we prevent external situations from dictating our inner state. For instance, 
If someone criticizes you unfairly, instead of reacting with anger or defensiveness, you might choose to remain calm and consider whether there's any truth to their words. This approach preserves your peace and allows for constructive outcomes. Isn't it liberating to know that you have the power to choose your emotional responses? In addition to mindfulness and emotional regulation, nurturing positive relationships contributes to your inner citadel. The Stoics valued social connections and believed that we are all part of a larger community. Marcus Aurelius stated, We were born to work together like feet, hands, and eyes, like the two rows of teeth, upper and lower. By fostering supportive relationships and practicing kindness, we reinforce our inner strength. When we surround ourselves with people who uplift us, we create an environment that bolsters our resilience. Conversely, by contributing positively to others' lives, we reinforce our own sense of purpose and connection. How might cultivating such relationships enhance your inner fortress? Practicing gratitude is another powerful tool in building your inner citadel. By regularly acknowledging and appreciating the good in our lives, we shift our focus from what's lacking to what's abundant. This positive outlook strengthens our resilience by fostering contentment and reducing anxiety. Seneca encouraged, nothing is more honorable than a grateful heart. Keeping a gratitude journal or simply reflecting on things you're thankful for each day can reinforce this mindset. Isn't it amazing how focusing on gratitude can transform your inner landscape? Now, let's delve into a practical exercise to help you build your inner citadel. Begin by identifying the virtues you wish to cultivate, perhaps patience, courage, or self-discipline. Each morning, set an intention to practice one virtue throughout the day. For example, if you choose patience, remind yourself to remain calm in situations that test you, like waiting in line or dealing with a difficult coworker. At the end of the day, reflect on your experiences. What went well? Where could you improve? Over time, this intentional practice strengthens your character and fortifies your inner citadel. Would committing to this daily exercise enhance your resilience? Another practical step is to limit the influence of negative external inputs. This might mean reducing time spent on social media, avoiding sensationalist news, or setting boundaries with people who drain your energy. The Stoics believed in protecting their inner world from harmful influences. Epictetus advised, keep your attention focused entirely on what is truly your own concern, and be clear that what belongs to others is their business and none of yours. By consciously choosing what you allow into your mind, you safeguard your inner citadel. Could creating such boundaries improve your mental well-being? Embracing challenges as opportunities for growth is also integral to building your inner citadel. The Stoics saw adversity as a means to strengthen character. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. By reframing obstacles as learning experiences, we become more resilient. When faced with a setback, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can it make me stronger? This mindset not only bolsters your inner strength, but also enhances your problem-solving abilities. Isn't it empowering to transform difficulties into stepping stones? Moreover, practicing self-compassion is crucial in fortifying your inner citadel. Acknowledge that you are human and will make mistakes. Instead of harsh self-criticism, offer yourself understanding and encouragement. This gentle approach fosters a supportive inner environment. Seneca advised, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Recognize that personal growth is a lifelong journey. By being patient and kind to yourself, you create a solid foundation for resilience. How might embracing self-compassion change your relationship with yourself? Aligning your life with your core values strengthens your inner citadel. Identify what truly matters to you, integrity, family, creativity, and ensure your actions reflect these priorities. Living authentically reduces internal conflict and enhances inner peace. Marcus Aurelius emphasized the importance of integrity. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. By staying true to yourself, 
you reinforce the walls of your inner citadel. Would living in alignment with your values enhance your sense of inner strength? Wisdom is a cornerstone of the inner citadel. The Stoics valued the pursuit of knowledge and self-improvement. By committing to lifelong learning, we sharpen our minds and enhance our ability to make sound judgments. In today's rapidly changing world, staying informed and adaptable is crucial. This doesn't just mean formal education, it includes learning from experiences, others, and self-reflection. Epictetus emphasized, It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Approaching life with humility and curiosity opens us to growth. How can you incorporate continuous learning into your daily routine to strengthen your wisdom? Consider setting aside time each day to read, listen to podcasts, or engage in meaningful conversations. Seek out diverse perspectives to broaden your understanding. When faced with decisions, take time to reflect and gather information before acting. This thoughtful approach enhances your problem-solving skills and fortifies your inner citadel. Isn't it exciting to think that every day offers opportunities to become wiser? Courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to act despite it. Building courage involves stepping outside of your comfort zone and confronting difficulties head on. The Stoics believe that adversity is a natural part of life and an opportunity to demonstrate virtue. Seneca wrote, Sometimes even to live is an act of courage. By embracing challenges rather than avoiding them, we build resilience. This might involve having tough conversations, taking on new responsibilities, or standing up for your beliefs. What courageous steps can you take to strengthen your inner citadel? Start by identifying areas in your life where fear holds you back. Set small, achievable goals to confront these fears gradually. Celebrate your successes along the way to reinforce your progress. Over time, facing fears becomes less daunting, and your confidence grows. Isn't it empowering to reclaim control over the things that once intimidated you? Justice, in Stoic terms, refers to fairness, honesty, and acting in the best interest of the community. By treating others with respect and integrity, we foster positive relationships and contribute to a harmonious society. Marcus Aurelius emphasized, Do not act as if you were going to live 10,000 years. Death hangs over you. While you live, while it is in your power, be good. Practicing justice reinforces your inner citadel by aligning your actions with your values. How might acting justly enhance your relationships and inner peace? Make a conscious effort to listen actively, empathize with others, and act with integrity. When conflicts arise, seek fair resolutions rather than pursuing personal gain at others' expense. By building a reputation for fairness, you cultivate trust and respect. Isn't it rewarding to know that your actions positively impact others and strengthen your own character? Temperance involves moderation and self-discipline, allowing us to regulate our desires and impulses. In a world filled with temptations and instant gratification, practicing temperance is vital for maintaining focus and balance. Epictetus taught, no man is free who is not a master of himself. By exercising self-control, we prevent external influences from dictating our actions. This might involve setting boundaries with technology, managing consumption habits, or controlling emotional reactions. How can temperance contribute to your inner citadel? Begin by identifying areas where impulsivity or excess impact your well-being. Develop strategies to manage these tendencies, such as creating routines, setting limits, or practicing mindfulness. Over time, temperance becomes a habit, enhancing your ability to make conscious choices aligned with your values. Isn't it liberating to be in control of your actions rather than being controlled by impulses? Mindfulness is the practice of being fully present and engaged in the current moment. It allows us to observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment, reducing stress and enhancing clarity. The Stoics valued living in the present, as the past is unchangeable and the future is uncertain. Marcus Aurelius advised, Confine yourself to the present. By grounding ourselves in the now, we reduce anxiety and increase our capacity to respond effectively to challenges. How might mindfulness strengthen your inner citadel? 
Incorporate mindfulness practices into your daily routine, such as meditation, deep breathing, or mindful walking. Pay attention to sensory experiences and internal states. When your mind wanders to worries about the past or future, gently bring it back to the present. This practice enhances self-awareness and emotional regulation. Isn't it refreshing to find peace in the here and now? Emotional intelligence involves recognizing, understanding, and managing our own emotions and those of others. It enhances communication, empathy, and conflict resolution skills. By developing emotional intelligence, we navigate social interactions more effectively and maintain inner balance. The Stoics emphasize the importance of understanding emotions to prevent them from overwhelming reason. Seneca stated, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. How can improving emotional intelligence contribute to your inner citadel? Practice identifying your emotions and their triggers. Reflect on how your feelings influence your thoughts and behaviors. Develop strategies to manage emotions constructively, such as pausing before reacting or reframing negative thoughts. Cultivate empathy by considering others' perspectives. Isn't it valuable to navigate emotions with wisdom and composure? Physical health is an essential component of overall resilience. The Stoics recognize the connection between body and mind, advocating for caring for one's physical self to support mental well-being. Regular exercise, proper nutrition, and sufficient rest enhance energy levels, mood, and cognitive function. Epictetus remarked, Training is nothing. Will is everything. How does taking care of your body reinforce your inner citadel? Develop a balanced routine that includes physical activity you enjoy, nourishing foods and adequate sleep. Listen to your body's needs and respect its limits. By maintaining physical health, you bolster your capacity to handle stress and challenges. Isn't it motivating to know that investing in your body strengthens your mind as well? A growth mindset is the belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. This perspective encourages embracing challenges, persisting in the face of setbacks, and viewing effort as a path to mastery. The Stoics advocated for continual self-improvement and learning from experiences. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily. How can adopting a growth mindset enhance your inner citadel? Approach challenges as opportunities to learn rather than obstacles. Embrace feedback and view failures as lessons. Set realistic goals and celebrate incremental progress. By focusing on growth, you build resilience and adaptability. Isn't it inspiring to see yourself evolve and overcome limitations? Acceptance involves acknowledging reality as it is, without resistance or denial. The Stoics taught that while we cannot control external events, we can accept them and choose our response. This acceptance reduces suffering caused by fighting against what we cannot change. Epictetus advised, make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. How can practicing acceptance strengthen your inner citadel? When faced with unchangeable situations, allow yourself to feel emotions but avoid dwelling on them. Focus on actionable steps within your control. Release attachment to specific outcomes and trust in your ability to navigate whatever arises. Isn't it freeing to let go of resistance and embrace the flow of life? Having a sense of purpose provides direction and motivation. The Stoics believe that living in accordance with nature and reason gives life meaning. By aligning actions with your purpose, you cultivate fulfillment and resilience. Seneca stated, Life is long if you know how to use it. How does connecting with your purpose contribute to your inner citadel? Reflect on what brings you joy and fulfillment. Identify your passions, values, and how you can contribute to others. Set meaningful goals that align with your purpose. By pursuing what matters most to you, you reinforce your inner strength and motivation. Isn't it enriching to live a life guided by purpose? To integrate these elements into your inner citadel, consider crafting a personal code of conduct. This code outlines the virtues and principles you commit to embody. Write down statements that reflect your commitment to wisdom, courage, justice, temperance, and other values important to you. Review your code daily, 
reflecting on how you embody these principles. Adjust and refine it as you grow. This personal code serves as a blueprint for your inner citadel, guiding your actions and reinforcing your resilience. Would committing to such a code enhance your clarity and strength? Remember that building your inner citadel is a personal and unique journey. The Stoics offer guidance, but it's up to you to apply these principles in ways that resonate with your life. Be patient with yourself, celebrate progress, and remain committed to your growth. The strength you cultivate within becomes a lasting source of resilience and fulfillment. As we conclude this exploration of the third Stoic secret to cultivating resilience, reflect on the power you hold to shape your inner world. By building your inner citadel, you create a sanctuary of strength, wisdom, and peace that supports you through life's inevitable challenges. The Stoics offer us timeless wisdom for modern living, guiding us toward a life of inner peace and strength. So, are you ready to embark on this inward journey and build your own inner citadel? Isn't it time to harness the power within and become the resilient person you're meant to be? Begin today by reflecting on one area where you can strengthen your inner citadel. Perhaps it's embracing a virtue, practicing mindfulness, or setting a personal goal. Commit to taking a small, actionable step. Over time, these steps accumulate, leading to significant transformation. Remember, the journey of building your inner citadel is yours alone, but you don't have to walk it by yourself. Seek support, share your experiences, and inspire others along the way. Your inner citadel awaits, strong, steadfast, and uniquely yours. Are you ready to build it?